All right, next up, in 2009, uh, there was a Tupelo champion crowned, and a few months later, he was an ultimate, the first, but not the last, to win Tupelo and the ultimate. Ladies and gentlemen, you saw him last night on stage. And I mean, I don't know that he's ever gotten scarves quite as well as I've ever given to them before than he did last night. But if you have a scarf from Bill Cherry last night, I put it around his neck. Just remember that. Bill Cherry! <laughs> I said, let me be there in your morning, let me be there in your night, let me change whatever's wrong and make it right, let me take you to that walking land, the only two can share, all I ask you. I said, let me be there in your morning, let me be there in your night, let me change whatever's wrong and make it right, make it right, let me take you to that wonderland that only you can share. Your ta that's your singing mic, and that's your, that that's your, that, you, you, you'll need it. You'll, me, you're the next one that needs it, here? so yeah, just I don't hang want to whistle. And that's your talking mic. Sometimes it'll take off. We got a good sound operator back there, though. He knows how to keep up with all that stuff. Bill Cherry. We're talking about Tupelo and how wonderful, and it's a thread that runs through all of the lives of the, all of Elvis tribute artists that, that have performed there, but especially for you guys that have won Tupelo and went on to win the ultimate. I mean, you had a pretty good year that year, and you continue to just keep rocking it on, man. Yeah, it, it was uh, it was amazing. I, I, I mean, honestly, I, I, uh, I was kind of scared to go to Tupelo because, you know, Tupelo was the birthplace, right? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, you know, I, I really don't do the 50s stuff. And so I, I had I had concerns about you know I, I really didn't think I'd win you know going down to Tupelo and uh, but 
you know, I, I just, uh, it, it blew me away. I've never won with the thought in my head that I got this, you know what I mean? Uh, I, I was of the belief, you know, like, like the Eagles song, you know, uh, I know I won't let you down because I'm already standing on the ground, you know, so, so I, I try not to give myself up to be let down, you know, so yeah. I start down here and then, you know, gradually. Yeah. Uh, That's one of the things that when I talk to a lot of the, the ETAs, you know, they say, well, I, I want to do it because I love Elvis and I love his music and I just right. want to sing. And then when they get second place, they're all mad that they didn't win. <laughs> and I'm like, well, you need to. You we all get that way, believe me. You, you can't do both. You have to, you know, if you're singing, right. you're, you're singing. And this is something that the tribute artist thing, you, you've been doing a while. And balancing that, you were talking about it last night on stage, balancing that with the, you know, the weld, 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 <laughs> weld. Don't sure. remind me. Yeah. yeah. It was a lifetime ago. No, you know, it, it was, uh, yeah, it, I was raised on Elvis music, you know, so I always liked him, I always sang, you know, with his records growing up, but I never, I never dreamed that, you know, I would actually make a living doing that, yep. you know, uh, and so I was, uh, uh, when, as a little kid, I would sing with the records, I'd watch the movies and then sing with the records, and, uh, because I liked him, you know. I mean, I, I thought he was cool. I mean, he drove race cars. I know I was hating the movies, but you know, young people, you know, growing up, those were cool things. Yeah. Speed boats, race cars. Still are. Yeah. And it still are, you know. And uh, so I, I just always liked him. And uh, but you know, as, as I got older, my music, you know, I liked all other kinds of music. But uh, I always stayed with Elvis. And then, uh, and then he had passed away. And uh, when he passed away. Uh, a year later, the following year, my parents took me to see uh, a local guy named Ron Furr out of St. Louis. Uh, mm -hmm. You remember him? Mm -hmm. Yeah, y'all remember him? Yeah. Um, it's okay. You can clap for Ron Furr. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Two or three, y'all. <laughs> He's not even here. That's enough for him anyway. No. So. <laughs> right, clap for you. You've already had it. Right. He's already had it. Yeah. But I saw Ron Furr, you know, and uh, you like it, did you? And uh, so my parents took me to see Ron Furr. I never got to see Elvis. Uh, but I do remember when he came to St. Louis, but I didn't. I was just, you know, I couldn't go on my own. And uh, <laughs> I couldn't find anybody to take me. I was too young to hitchhike. <laughs> but so anyway, uh, I saw Ron Furr. And as I'm, I'm watching this guy, I'll never forget it. Uh, it, was, it was a huge room. It always had passed the year before. And, um, and it, was, uh, it was an old furniture store, and, but you could get like a thousand people in there. And, uh, and there we were. And the drums started beating, and the spotlights were moving around, and uh, they caught the side door, and the door flew open, and here comes two bodyguards. They was dressed in black, black glasses on, and a guy in a white jumpsuit right behind him, and then two more guys in black suits, you know, like the mafia walking, or the men in black, or whatever. You know? yeah. And so they walked him out to the stage, and people stood in their chairs, and I was like, well, it's not Elvis, why are they acting that way? You know? <laughs> and and, uh, and as, Really, I mean, I, I mean, I'm 12 years old or something, and I'm thinking, why are they acting like that? You know, <laughs> it's not him. And uh, but you know, as I watched it and you know, listening to him and everything, I, that's when I got the bug, and I thought, wow, I do that in the bedroom, and I didn't know there was an audience for it, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's a true story. Yeah. You know, and so you, so you play a tennis racket and you sing into a hairbrush. Right. You know? Right. You know. Yeah. And, and uh, I spray in this black stuff, and my hair was blonde, and, and I spray this black stuff in my hair, and I do little mock shows in my living room for my parents, and my dad would hold a flashlight in the corner of the room, all the lights were out, and he was my spotlight. <laughs> True story. <laughs> my mom was on the couch, my dad was in the corner with a flashlight, and we, we put on a live Elvis record, you know? And, and, and I would sing when I could, and when I couldn't, I just moved. And um, my dad would, sh would shake that light and it would have a strobe effect. And we had a big mirror in our living room and I could see myself in the mirror. So I knew what I was doing, right? So does that look cool? No, don't do that again. And, uh, you know, so, so I trained myself like that, right? Yeah. But I never, got, I never got enough nerve though, you know, until later on in life to do that. These kids that, that do it now, it's, it's unbelievable. It's amazing because I didn't have that kind of courage, you know. Yeah. Yeah. At, that, at that time. So, uh, yeah, all those young guys, man, you know, when, when you see these kids, give it up for them because it takes a lot to get in front of people. Yeah. It really does. Hey, check out this ring, man. Wow. You know what that is? No. It, uh, it looks like uh, some type of uh, building. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> this, ladies and gentlemen, belonged to Elvis Presley. This ring, 
This ring is called the Chieftain Ring, and it was gifted to Ed Parker. And uh, I'm just going to touch it. Yeah, go ahead and touch it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, a, a real good friend of mine, uh, Glenn Johnson, has the Elvis Museum in Texas. He, he's here tonight, and, and he's letting me wear this right now. So, wow. Isn't Glenn, that cool? Thank you. Woo! I feel like I got, you know, the whole degree. Well, Bill, you're just an incredible performer, and I, and I saw some video. Uh, I, my schedule, I was just talking with Dean, my schedule during Elvis week is such that I'm all, I'm here and there, and I can never see my friends. Mm -hmm. uh, I regret missing your uh, show at the Halloran. I saw some video of it, and it, it was frighteningly, beautifully done. <laughs> I mean, it was, um, oh, it looked you. amazing. Oh, yeah. It absolutely looked amazing. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's a lot of, uh, it's, a, it's, you know, Elvis wasn't in good shape, you know what I mean? But his voice was, you yeah. know, very powerful. And uh, I remember watching that when they aired it, you know, he, he yeah. passed in, in what, August? So October they aired it, and yeah. I remember watching it on television, you know. But uh, yeah, so I, I had a memory, uh, a distinct memory of seeing that on TV. So that's something that I wanted to do. Yeah. You know, I just wanted to re kind of recreate that the best that I could. Of course, nobody's the Elvis Presley, you know, but uh, it, was, it was fun doing that. You give us that moment that that if you saw, I always say, if you saw Elvis, you get that feeling again. Just for just oh, that was what it was like. And if you never got to see Elvis, that's just about as close as you're going to see. It, right it was unbelievable, really. Yeah. And, and the audience was was fantastic. And uh, but you know, going back to Tupelo though, you know, I, when 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 I won a Tupelo, uh, that really meant a lot. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because you you win in in the birthplace, yeah. right? It wasn't you know just some place you know somewhere else and all that was cool, you know. But winning in the birthplace. And, and the, the folks in Tupelo are the nicest, kindest people you could ever want to meet. And, uh, and, and they're approachable. Uh, unlike in other places, you know, it, 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 it's ran more like business. But this, you can meet somebody in Tupelo and they'll pull out their wallet and show you pictures mm -hmm. of them with Elvis yeah. as a child. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? And that's the kind of place it is. It's, yeah. it's a very, you know. And uh, of course, uh, from there, then I, I, I went to Memphis rep representing Tupelo. And uh, in, in the short story, I remember standing on the stage. I made it. I made it to fifth of the five, top five, right? And uh, and I'm standing there. But as I walked down to go to the stage, there was two guys sitting in the wing where people couldn't see it, right? There was two chairs, and I'm walking down that hallway. And as I got closer, I realized that it was Ronnie Tut and it was Joe Gershow mm -hmm. sitting in the wing. Nobody could see him, but they're sitting in that wing, and I thought. If I wasn't nervous enough, it's like, oh my God. Yeah. So I saw those guys, I thought, oh no, you know. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. True story. so I just go out there, you know, yeah. and I, I had to stay focused. And, uh, but anyway, so we did our songs and we're standing on stage. And, uh, and they gave a drum roll, and uh, that was your cue. They gave a drum roll. <laughs> and in fifth place, right? And I thought, here we go. And it wasn't me. I thought, oh, I, got, I got fourth place. You know, this. <laughs> I'm not lying, I'm telling you the truth. I thought, wow, I got fourth place in this thing, right? And in fourth place, it wasn't me. And I thought, I thought to myself, I said, in my head, you know, I was like, I, I, I'm in third place. I got third, I get money when I'm in third place. <laughs> And the reason I say that is because I was laid off from the welding job at the time that I won, right? So I thought, oh, this is good, this is good. And so I got third place. And then all of a sudden, it wasn't me. And I was like, I was like, oh my God, I got second place. And I know I'm in the money, right? I can handle this. I'm good, I'm good, you know? I thought, wow, this is unbelievable, you know? I'm all smiling, yeah. You know? I'm looking at the guy next to me thinking, you know, he's got this, you know? And, uh, Second place. I was getting ready to move forward and they called the other guy. I was like, oh my God, I just won this thing. I, I couldn't believe it. Yeah. I, could, I couldn't believe it. Yeah. It was unreal, you know, yeah. And, and so they brought that big old check out to me and you know, I still have it. I kept it in case of hard times. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I you thought I was going to have to cash it back in 2019, 20, 20. Yeah. Yeah. It, was, it was worth more then than it is now. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. I spent it anyways, you know. Well, it's, it's and, and I just, I, I put it down to, you know, you were really good, but you had wonderful judges the year that you You ain't lying, you know. You know I, I, um, 
So we kind of have a tradition that when I'm in the building, uh, Bill asks me to always be his Charlie Hodge, and I can't right. count the times that I've shared the stage with you, but this is the first time I want you to give me my water. Oh. I must say it is not beyond me to do it. Let me hand it to you the right way. He, if you watch him, he hands me the cup in a special way, and that's the way they would hand it to Elvis, and, and he, 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 he pays attention. Too below Tom and, and Big Lou talking. Well, I'm not Big Lou. Yeah. That's, our, that's our new podcast, and we have a mug. Oh, you have a, well, we you're have, official if you got a mug. Exactly, we got a mug. Bill Cherry, thank you for being here, and uh, you got some more music to sing for these wonderful people. And show them, some more. show them, well, you can work it into your recitative and your okay. song. All right, we're going to do it. There you go. What are we doing? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. What, what baby? What? What on it? Oh, I changed your mic. Oh, thank you, thank you. Thank you down there. They're, they're really good at this. I got the right mic now, though. It's there quiet. You go. Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. good. Am I whistling again? <laughs> you may catch me now, huh? We're, wait a minute, wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. This is the old Waylon Jennings song, right? Be still sparking. I got that. Go ahead, kick it off. Long ago and far away. Mine wrong key. Stop that thing. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you. It's okay, I've already won, so. <laughs> yeah. My blood pressure is good now, you know. And uh, you know, I can see it clearly now. <laughs> and I don't need the sun to do it. Long ago and far away, my old common baby shoe. I turned the world on which way just because you asked me to. Like I do no other fear, simple love and a simple truth. There's no end to what I do. Because you asked me to Let the world call me a fool
thank you very much. Thank you. You know, I was thinking, I got the, I, yeah, I, got, I already won, so I don't have to worry about it. And I have the ring, too. Yeah. <laughs> Glenn, I'll see you later, man. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Bill has left the building uh, yeah, with your I'm, ring. I'm, yeah. Got the ring. I'm good to go. All right. Anyway. <laughs> was that the mystery train? What that was, was the that? mystery train. Was that the mystery train? I don't have a ticket. And why not doing that song either? So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this next song we'd like to do for you, I'm going to ask uh, my good buddy, Big Lou. It'll come on out. Is that? There he is. Come on out here, brother. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Jeff Lewis. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it again for Finley Watkins. Let's hear it for him. <laughs> Finley Watkins. Woo. That's okay. That's all right. Just make sure you give the right guy the right check. You know. <laughs> I want the big check like I used to get. You know. Anyway, uh, ladies and gentlemen, so uh, we, we had another song we was going to do, but, but I, I asked Jeff, I says, you know, uh, I really love singing with him, and he knows that, you know, and uh, he covers all my bad notes. <laughs> Which it makes my job very easy. Zero point <laughs> zero. But uh, it, it's a song that we, we do together all the time, and those of you, you know, that have seen it, you, you're familiar with it. Has anybody not been here before? Anybody? One person? We got a lot of new Helen people. Who's been player? here before? One, two, don't be afraid to raise your hand. Yell, we can't One, see two, you. Three, Yell. Five. Woo! There we go. Give us a Jack Day. Woo! Okay, yeah. Where's Jack at when you need him? Woo! There he is. <laughs> Did you give him this, Jack? Did you give him that? But I had to earn it the hard way. <laughs> I'll tell you. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, this song is it's behave yourself. We're fixing the singer. Got oh, okay. Thank the good Lord we're doing a gospel I'm going to step over okay. here because a lightning bolt might come Don't over. Don't walk over here. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, as you know, Elvis had a great love for gospel music. And, uh, you know, I, I believe that that really was his calling, you know, and then something took a different direction. But uh, the only Grammys Elvis ever had was for his gospel recordings. And if you listen to them, it will move you, right? And uh, in the soul. And uh, so I'm going to sing this next song. And Jeff's going to help me. It's called Help Me. What's that? <laughs> Please. 
time, you think? Thank you, Bill. All right. When Bill learns to relax and have fun, he's gonna go far in this business. <laughs>